<laughs> well, it's that time of year again. I'm reminded lately of that song, God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Because remember, Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day. The reason why I say that is because they were probably telling people to not get too carried away about all the things you want to do this holiday season. This is my Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, um, Cool Kwanzaa, Yuletide greetings. Uh, trying to think of what the other one is. Um, <laughs> I can't even think of them all right now. Midnight Mass. Oh boy, that must be like candlelight service. Uh, let's see, what else do they do? Uh, what do people do every day? I'm not quite sure because you see, really, while it's nice to say Happy Holidays, it's not a fight to say Merry Christmas. It's not hard for me to say, you know, have a Hag uh, Sameach, you know, to the Jewish community or to the Kwanzaa to, you know, the Catholics or to the Protestants or to whoever. Because every day is a day unto the Lord. And this is the day that the Lord has made. Those are the basic reasons why we should rejoice and be glad in it. We say, because the scripture tells us to, that I will rejoice. Well, I can tell you, it's not always easy. This time of year, you know, I lost a kayak that I can't afford to lose because I don't have the money. I lost a lot of gear for the Mississippi River trip, which at the time was like, okay, you know, it was a kind of an expensive kayak, you know, and I was like, well, I don't know, I mean, it's expensive for me, maybe not for you, you know, maybe a couple hundred bucks, you know, but still for me, it's like, when am I going to have a couple hundred bucks? Uh, we don't collect money here, you know, it doesn't grow on trees or anything else. It's pretty poor around this house. Here. But we get by. Praise the Lord. And um, so this time of year started off with, you know, some real challenges, you know. I mean, I rescued my wife, which was a good thing. Lost a kayak in the year, bad thing. Then not shortly, or not too long after that, Unfortunately, the computers crashed, and then the laptop crashed, and they were struck by major viruses. Well, that was hard, because it took me almost a week to 10 days to get it running. And then about one week after getting the hard drive running, it crashed. I'm kind of looking over at it right now and thinking, man, that's a big computer that crashed. I mean... We restored it, and, you know, it's a terabyte of information I lost, you know, when I restored it. And then one of the programs corrupted the Windows file on Windows 10. And so I don't have a backup disk because it was off of the Internet. And Windows doesn't really do any kind of remote, come over your house and set you up. So really, I lost a computer, too. You know, I mean, I lost a major part of my ministry, you know, it's like, well, ouch, that hurt, and so, you know, it's going to sit for a long time until maybe get some money, I mean, this time, I'm a retired network engineer, so I know how to fix it, but I don't have the tools, and I don't have the equipment, and I don't have the money, so sooner or later, maybe can turn it in and get, you know, the repair company to fix it, computer repair. In my laptop, you know, I'm looking at it on two screens because one screen, I guess I should put my glasses on see who's trying to call me. Oh, I think I could skip it. But my laptop, part of the screen doesn't work, which we couldn't afford to take in to get it repaired. So I'm looking at it on a big screen. So I have two screens, kind of, which is a little confusing for the laptop because I have to kind of use different portions of it for different reasons. So that's not really too bad. And then my wife lost her job. She, her company had made some bad business decisions. It, it came back to haunt them, so they laid her off. And, you know, I mean, lots of wonderful recommendations, but no money. <laughs> that means no money, honey. And it's like kind of one of those...
Seriously? Seriously. So, you know, we have unemployment, you know, and praise the Lord. Hey, I will rejoice and be glad. Unemployment this time, you know. This time, unemployment covers the rent. You know, we, a few years back, got just right up to the point of not making rent, and then somebody provided for it. I'm not sure who, I think it was one of us. Could have been the Lord. You know, God has done miracles for me in the past, but I don't think this was one of them. I think he used one of his kids. My wife's kids used one of them. Anyways, we know what I mean. So, while there's ample reason to rejoice, I mean, I have one kayak left, packed away now. I don't want to lose that. Um, and, you know, I mean, we wound up, you know, having to get rid of our phones and then go down to track phone, and then that wasn't going to work, so we went over to AARP to get the discount, because we can't afford to really run quite a bit of, you know, phone costs, because we've already gotten rid of, like, cable a couple years ago, in order to, you know, save money from, you know, like, over, God, cable's like $100 or more, you know, for phone, and then, you know, we have computers, so it's that expensive. So being pragmatic, being faithful, and being trusting in the Lord, I know that God has compressed me. I know that God has addressed certain things in my life, and God has taken away some things. The Lord giveth, praise the Lord, the Lord taketh away, praise the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. So, while I'm wishing you a Merry Christmas, this isn't unusual for me. Every year, this is the same thing. Matter of fact, I push my wife away on purpose to go spend time with her kids, to go do the Christmas thing at their house, you know, with their grandkids, because it's always a downer at this time of year for me. I don't know why. I mean, I think I know why, but I'm not going to speculate. You know, God knows why. Um, we all have what they call cyclical cycles, not they're, they used to be called biorhythms, but it's not quite a biorhythm. But it's true that there's a time and a season to everything under the sun. The time to be rejoicing, the time to be sorrow, the time to be sad, the time to be happy, the time to be glad, and all that stuff. And to a certain degree, you know, we do have, by way of the Spirit of God, you know, dwelling within us, a certain proprietary, uh, proprietary capability of not having it overwhelm us. And I'll admit, you know, when when the computer wouldn't start this morning, and I spent, you know seven or eight restarts and then a few minor things to try to see if there was anything I could do. It didn't even get to the place where you could do something. And that's pretty serious stuff. It really corrupted a Windows file. And I mean a very basic Windows file. So it's like it needs to, you know, be addressed in code probably. So, you know, I kind of went, wow, you know, I it didn't freak me out or make me cry you know, when um, the kayak was gone and, you know, I had to make the choice between, you know, my wife or the kayak. It was like, no brainer, I let the kayak go. And I was kind of thinking it would come back, but either somebody kept it or raptured. <laughs> but, you know, the older I get, you know, and the more that I am dealing with these times and seasons. We're better off this year at Christmas than we were last year. And we're better last year than we were the year before. And God is bringing us slowly, you know, to better times. And we planned out, you know, for the season. So we tried to make sure that all our bills were, you know, like reduced and things smooth sailing. Never expected because it was a job my wife loved. And it was a local one with the, you know, electricians and, you know, uh, company she, you know, we were both pretty confident. I kind of, you know, wondered, I heard some things, you know, so I kind of wondered about them. They don't have, you know, a corporate mindset. They have a business mindset, sort of. You know? So, you know, I heard some decisions they made, you know, she talked about, and I thought, mm, how many businesses can turn away business? And they did, and they bit them. And they did it for the wrong reasons, pride. And I don't know, maybe God slapped them around. But. So, while we're on an unemployment, you know, we go down, 
and the stress of it all from the computers and the, the kayak and you know the planning the trip because I'm going on the Mississippi. I mean, if I have to swim the sucker, <laughs> I'll grab a log on one end, I'll hang on and paddle and with the other hand and go all the way down the Mississippi. I mean, believe me, there is no doubt that I am going down the Mississippi River. That's going to happen in May. Yep, I'm going. No doubt about it. It's going to happen. One way or another. So, really, I have a certain amount of help. I mean, I'm exhausted every day now. and I've lost some weight. I dropped about 20 pounds and can't afford that. And, um, you know, I mean, it's, you know, you know for a 60-year-old, I'm in good shape. Really, I mean, for a Crohn's disease patient, I'm in phenomenal shape. For a ileostomate, I'm like cooking, cruising. But I'll admit, I can't get around it, can't medicate it. You know, I mean, I don't want to medicate it. Well, I don't know. Maybe I do want to medicate it. Oh, <laughs> you know, some guys could say, yeah, go toke. Woo! I don't smoke. So, no, I don't want to be medicated, but. The truth is, I always go on a downer this time of year, you know, because things do happen, and, you know, it's not because I went on a downer, it's because it's just normal, a part of normal life. So, while I'm trying to wish you a Merry Christmas, don't expect, you know, jumping for joy. I mean, yeah, I pray for you that you'll be blessed with your family outings that you do. You know. I really more think about the people that don't do Christmas, you know, and don't do Hanukkah and don't do this time of the season very well. And I know what it's like. I mean, it's it's a struggle, <laughs> man. No matter what you do. I mean, I've been exercising even and it just doesn't help it. You know, I mean, the taste buds are gone. I mean, it's a clinical sign of depression when your taste buds are gone or, you know, you just don't taste right. You're not sleeping. You know, you're not eating. You know, you just can't seem to get energy. Of course, with all the other things, of course you can't get energy. I mean, if you just compiled what the symptoms are, that's what causes the other thing. But really, it's just a clinical depression. And, you know, while I can describe it, prescribe it, and identify it, nothing I do in the Lord has ever changed that. I mean, I go right through the ministry anyways. Like last year, I mean, believe me, there was a ton of Christmas stuff out there, you know. The year before that, same thing. But, you know, this year, it's just really kind of harder because I'm using, you know, a laptop and now a phone. You know, to keep going, you know, praise the Lord. I mean, God has provided such a means in a way that I was going to show you that I have an opportunity to use a phone for most of the things that I was going to probably use some other means, but unfortunately the phones didn't work out. So we wound up getting a phone, you know, with this AARP that's for me, you know, because my wife had a phone from work that she took instead of a raise and on the one hand being out of work a my insurance is covered my wife not so much but you know i mean we're just gonna trust in the lord you know you you don't trust in the lord when things are good really actually most people just ignore the lord when things are good but you know you don't really demonstrate the faith that God has given you until you do trust in the Lord when things are rough and tough. And you prove that you lean not on your own understanding when you invest in others when you're divested of anything to invest in with them. You know, so it must be of the spirit to be able to share, to dare, to take on the enemy at your week's time because he's going to come at you. He's waiting for that time of the season to smack you around. <laughs> and he does a pretty good job. But being that it's not just Christmas, because Christmas is just really a season. It's not the Lord's birthday. Let's be real. I mean, God was... God, God, to put it blind, Jesus doesn't really have a birthday. He was incarnated probably in the summer... Probably around, I forget which feast, I think Feast of Tabernacles, I can't remember because he tabernacles with us, so it probably was Tabernacles. Uh, a lot of people believe that he was conceived during you know, the Feast of Dedication, but you know, not Hanukkah. Hanukkah and the Feast of Dedication, two different things. Um, rabbis today kind of you know like want to get on the 
hey, let's be the Hanukkah light of the world routine, you know, stealing what Jesus said. And that's what Hanukkah does. It really tries to take away from what really Jesus is in the light of the world. But besides all that, and besides Santa Claus, you know, kind of stealing some thunder from, you know, whatever you want to believe in, you know, so. I like them all. I mean, don't get me wrong. I used to love this time of the year, you know, and just being out in the snow or the cold, and I used to sing songs. My voice is gone. I used to play a lot of guitar, you know. My fingers are gone. I got arthritis. Matter of fact, that fingers. Let's just see it. Um, maybe this one you can see that's bent. No, I can't see it that well, I guess. Anyways, this finger goes, which is like arthritis. Kind of bad. Yeah. So, you know, I'm kind of like losing it, you know, when it comes to the body wearing out. But I think my mind's still here. I haven't lost my marbles, have I? Has anybody seen me? Looking for my marbles. You haven't been playing with my marbles, have you? Maybe. <laughs> but as it were, I try to tell my wife to go, you know, and to keep going and to do the things she wants to do with her kids because, you know, she gets slapped around. You know, this year we bought a lot of Christmas presents early, you know, for them. And she gets into Christmas. So I try to get her away and then I'm left alone. Alone with Jesus, but still alone. Maybe I'm left alone for you. Maybe that's why I go to her. The things I do to be here with you. Maybe it's not just Merry Christmas, but maybe it's just like peace on earth. God knows good things for you. You see, we make a lot of big deals out of the Annunciation, which is what this is. It's called the Annunciation because that's really what the actual good news is. The good news is the angel proclaims it. Behold, born unto you in this day in the city of David, the Savior. Jesus. Laid in a manger, in swaddling clothes. He shall be. For the government shall be upon the shoulders, and he shall be peace, prince of peace, and, and all the other good stuff. But he is, if you think about it, a child on the run. He's a member of a family that has to be a refugee. He's a person who identifies with what I'm going through. And he is more than aware of what you're going through. And I know most of you, 90, probably 99 and 9 tenths percent of you, are thrilled with Christmas. You got a lot of Christmas cheer going on. But even that, my Pepsis, I mean, if I ever knew it was the end of the world, they took my... This is the new Pepsi bottle. Now you may not think much about it. You may think it's a beautiful bottle, but this used to be... Looking like this. This is just, you know, round. This is pretty and nice. They're both basically Pepsi, right? Well, if you're a hardcore drinker for about 40 years of Pepsi, and you went from 16 ounce returnable bottle and would not drink any other kind, to find out that this one, for the last 20 years, has been around the 1.5 liter size. It had the perfect amount of sugar, the perfect amount of Carbonation, the perfect amount of water, all that good stuff. And then your wife comes home with this. You want a divorce. Because <laughs> when it comes to Pepsi and my wife, hey, you hit the road, Jack. You better find the right one and get on track. Well, <laughs> Pepsi did it to us, so. Now I've been trying out like all the different styles again of Pepsi because I can line them all up, you know, and they just don't taste the same. I'm an addict, you know, I'm a bit of this kind of like, you know, an alcoholic. Well, I'm a Pepsi alcoholic. Although I've gone to Mountain Dew when I was sick one time and stayed on Mountain Dew for a while, but I'm not a Dew. 
But who knows? I might have to. But anyways, Pepsi's flavors, because of the, you know, way the carbonation is and with light and all the other stuff, you know, different sugars are actuated. And so, you know, there's one I like that's kind of sweet, you know. This year, and it used to only be a buck. So this year we got nailed. You know? Pepsi's gone. Kayak's gone. Money's gone. Some beer's gone. Computer's gone. You know, a lot of things are gone. What was it for you? It's never persisted. It's always been there. Always will be. And I know that, you know, maybe January, February, somewhere around there, you know. I hope it doesn't take much longer than that. You know, my wife will find a job, you know, and we'll be back, you know, in full swing, so to speak. Or, Maybe God will shut the ministry down. I don't want to say please because I've enjoyed being in the ministry. You know, I've enjoyed doing the ministry, but you know, if it's time to go back to work, hey, I'll go back to work. You know, I'll go, I don't know, street sweeping or clean toilets. <laughs> Problem cleaning the toilets, man. I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> I kind of like it, you know, like you find these stupid jobs, you know, you get some stupid job where, you know, somebody else in charge is really stupid, you know, and they tell you stupid things to do and you just go over there, you know, snickering, because you know better, and you just do your job, you know, you get paid for it and you just laugh going home with your money. I mean, it's the way I look at work, it's like, I'm not defined by my job, I'm not resigned to my job, my job doesn't make me who I am. Nor does money make me, you know, suddenly, oh, I got faith because, see, I got a lot of money in my bank account, you know, or I got a job. No, I don't change any when I do have money or when I don't have money. Matter of fact, I pretty much avoid having a lot of money. Doesn't work so well. You know, Jesus said how hard it is for rich men to have the kingdom of heaven. So I guess I'm getting off tangent for Christmas, but then that's kind of easy to do. Because really, there's so much wrapped in, you know, with the caroling and the singing and the yodel la di da, you know, and the Hanukkahs, you know, where they're you know getting away with legal gambling, cradles, you know, doing their thing. You know. But you know, I mean, they're just as much compromising as anybody else. But I guess what I wanted you to think of, you know, in my Merry Christmas to you and my Happy New Year is, don't tell anybody. Jesus coming. Sooner than you think. Yeah. Jesus is coming. Sooner.